skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. How's that for a slice of fried gold? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how this machine worked. It seems to run on some form of electricity. And it was wrong. It was a bad call, Ripley. It was a bad call. Bad call. Right. Some are good for fighting, others for dying. It's just two movies. Welcome back to another episode. No, nay. Welcome back to the first episode of the Red Carpet Night here at Blue Cheese and Bacon Studios. My name's Daniel King. Uh, with me today is Birdman. Hey, I'm Birdman. Bird, you're looking great in that Armani suit. Oh, thanks. I just picked this up. I, uh, I'm i naked, as you can see. Yeah, it's I... kind of weird. You guys aren't going to start sucking each other's dicks, are you? <laughs> like, I might just roll the outro right there. <laughs> Just, that's it. That's the show. Uh, yeah, so we're we're doing the Low Fill Awards. We've been doing the podcast for I, a year, te- technically over a year now. We've, well, been, yeah. we've been posting it for a year. Yes, uh, we had a couple that just weren't uh, weren't worthy of your ear holes, right? Because they were bad. They were bad. <laughs> they were bad. I wish they'd do that with movies. Just get to the end and go. Nah, it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> You remember fucking Thanks Killing Three? <laughs> <laughs> that made me more angry oh, than, than I've ever been. I got so mad. So with the Low Fill Awards, what we do is we take all the movies that we've watched over the year. I think we did a total of fifty episodes. Yep. So we took every good movie that we watched that was above that we rated above at or above a ninety percent. We took all the bad movies that we rated at or above a seventy five percent. Put them in a pot. Sent them out to everybody who's been on the show and said, hey, here's 12 questions. Choose one from the good movie category, one from the bad movie category for each of these 12 questions. These are going to be the nominations. Then we put everything else on the on the gram. On the gram. And let the listeners vote. So we've got, we've got listener decisions here also. Oh. But who gives a shit? Because <laughs> you don't tune in to listen to our Instagram followers talk about uh, bad movies. So let's, we'll we'll go ahead and just dig right into it. Let's it's going to be a little bit shorter form episode, but you know, it's once a year and I do kind of want to honor and hit the highlights of some of these. Yeah. Uh, uh, Daniel. Yo. So this is called the Low Fill Awards. The Low Fill Awards. That's Can you right. explain to the, uh, the audience what a low fill is? Thank you for bringing that to my attention, because honestly, that had not even fucking crossed my mind. Uh, So the low fill is, uh, as you know, Birdman works at a brewery, uh, location undisclosed, because (laughs) he can't be having his day filled up with like, you know, women coming by and flashing his titties and (laughs) sticking their titties on the glass and going, "Ah, Birdman, you're so so famous for that podcast, it's just your movies. Uh, So we have to keep it a secret. Uh, you know, to to protect his unless employment and career, uh, unless we haven't edited it out. He's like, which unless, in case, <laughs> unless that titty thing's real, in which case, <laughs> if, that, if that's a real problem, <laughs> let's go ahead and. Yeah, I mean, we could say it. Uh, no, so Bird works at a brewery where they do, you know, canning and bottling and stuff. Uh, turns out when you can a shitload of beers, some of them aren't full to the proper amount. Right. There is a certain amount of dead space you have to have in each can. If it's below that amount of dead space, they won't really carbonate properly. Yes. And those are low fills. Exactly. And when we started doing this podcast... I used to bring you a lot of low fills. would bring fucking (laughs) cases of low fills over. So we would sit in here in the studio and get fucking hammered drunk and talk about movies and uh, all thanks to low fill awards and 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 trash cinema. Right. And the uh, the brewery that I work at now, we just don't have as many. Right. Right. I still Smaller, get a little, so. I get a little cheeky low fill little, every, little cheeky. every now, little cheeky shower we. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get into yeah, it. Let's jump into it, man. Um, we had nominations for this is strictly for the good movie. The first first category was the award, the low fill award for best original ish story. Yep. The nominees were the Prestige, Another Round, and Sorry to Bother You. Okay. Those were the nominees. Are, yeah. Uh, I am still gonna pick. Sorry to bother you. Okay. Because it's in, it was my nomination, but it's an absolutely insane story, and I love it to pieces. It is. It's it's definitely out there. Yeah. I picked. Or do you want me to? Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. What? what uh, uh, I picked another round. Also, just because it's or was that one of them? Yeah. That, yeah. That was one of them. Uh, the Prestige, another round, and sorry to okay, bother you. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I picked another round. Um, it's just different. I, it it is. It was uh, one of the. 
it was a movie that we watched over the last year. It's probably one of my top three that mm-hmm. we watched over the last year for the yeah. podcast. It's fantastic film. It's an amazing movie. Just a, a kind of a fresh original oh, idea. I, I can't wait till they bastardize it by remaking it with Leo. Ugh. I'm sure it'll still be fine. Are but they still it, doing that? It won't be as good. I don't know. Last I heard, yeah. Huh. We'll yeah. see. So are we doing... The the listeners, okay, now, yeah. after these nominations, I put them on the gram and had people vote on them, and then this one versus that one, and blah, 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 blah. Right. Uh, the listeners selected another round with a 56% win. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, that's what that's what took it in the end. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I would say between my pick, your pick, and the listeners, I would say unequivocally, the Lofel Award goes to Thomas Vinterberg <laughs> for another round. Yes. And Mads Mikkelsen, because if it weren't for Mads... I don't know how great of a movie it would be. He well, really it, showcases a lot of his amazing acting skills in that. Not and maybe not not even necessarily that. It it's just would it have been as uh, well known? I guess to the caliber. Yeah. Well, as far as bad movies go, uh, best originalish story. The nominees were Tammy and the T Rex, Spaghetti Man, Hell Comes to Frogtown, and Crippled Avengers. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which one of those you picked. Uh, I think I nominated Crippled Avengers because it really is just a bizarre story. These four dudes get get maimed and then they decide to like, now we're going to fight back now that we can't walk or talk or see or hear. <laughs> and they kick a dude's ass because they all become ninja masters. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy that. I it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I didn't watch that one, but my pick was Hell Comes to Frogtown. Hell Comes to Frogtown is a blast. Did, <laughs> yeah. did you and I watch that together before yeah. we ever started the podcast? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, we did. That might have actually been the first movie that kicked it off where we're like, we should do something like I think this. it was, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I normally will attribute it to uh, Thanks Killing, but I think it is Hell Comes to Frogtown is yeah. actually the first movie that we uh, – uh, Yeah, I think that was – It, was... it brain-babied. It, bra- <laughs> it brain it brain-babied. <laughs> Have you seen Titan, by the way? No. I watched it last night. Real fucking weird. Uh, we'll talk about it sometime. Uh, yeah, so the listeners. Yeah, what the listener? What the, the listeners say? The listeners went with Tammy and the T-Rex. Okay. Uh, it won by 52%, just by just squeaking by. Uh, I, th- I think if I could pick this again, with looking at all these nominations, if Spaghetti Man hadn't already been nominated, I would have nominated Spaghetti Man, because I, I think it's a blast. And that's what I would have went to. It's not really an original story, though. Hmm. Yeah. That's, I probably that was... would. I probably would choose Hell Comes to Frogtown. Yeah. Hell Comes to Frogtown for you. Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. So the the Lowfield Award goes to whoever made Hell Comes to Frogtown <laughs> and uh, Roddy Piper. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, how about favorite unexpected gem for the good movies? We nominated Cabin in the Woods, Robot and Frank, Bloody Hell, and Pig. I want my pig. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are two pigs inside you. Inside, <laughs> inside you, there are two pigs. Uh, one of them full of hate and malice, and the other one is full of uh, bacon and other pork products. <laughs> uh, the people, the people have spoke loud and clear, and okay. Cabin in the Woods took it by a landslide, which I honestly did not expect. Like it's kind of an older movie that's out there in the ether. Like I know yeah. everybody likes it, but. I mean, to choose it over, like, Robot and Frank and Bloody Hell and Pig, I think maybe what happened is a lot of people just haven't seen Robot and Frank, Bloody Hell and Pig. Probably. Yeah. That's probably what. I chose Bloody Hell. I also would have chose Bloody Hell. It was my it's a movie I just, like, happened to watch and absolutely fucking blew me away. I, I did purchase it, by the way, so I have yeah. it now. Well, and, and you were like, hey, let's do this fucking movie for yeah, an episode. because it's wild. And I was like... All right, I'm down. Yeah. And I watched it and I was like, this is fucking awesome. Like, I want to buy it. Yeah. I want to own the movie. It's, I've it's... Wa- since I purchased it, I've watched it like seven times. It just never gets old. You can we just... watched it. I think we watched most of it last weekend. Dude, you can just keep playing it, man. <laughs> it's just, it's fun every time. There's never a dull yeah. moment. All right. So the audience said Cabin in the Woods. The audience said Cabin in the Woods I by said... 78%. That is the Damn. most staggering victory, I think, besides probably a thing with the Joker because people love the fucking Joker. Yeah. You said you're going with Bloody Hell. I'm taking Bloody I'm Hell. I'm going with Bloody way. Hell. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay. Hey, blo- bloody Hell. Uh, enjoy your award. Yeah. Favorite unexpected gem for the bad movie. Oh, shit. I'll tell you right now, uh, the listeners definitely preferred Tammy and the T-Rex with a 56% uh, win there. Over... 
As far as the bad movies, what was nominated was Uninvited, which was a blast, uh, Tammy and the T-Rex, Torque, and Deadly Friend. Ooh, for me, for me, I think it's probably going to be Deadly Friend. Okay. It was a delightful Wes Craven thing with a robot that was like, <laughs> like just making stupid fucking robot noises all the time. Uh, it was a weird story. The effects were bad. It had like hilarious. It's a bit where a, a robot dead girl throws a basketball at the lady from Throw Mama from the Train. You know who I'm talking about? She. <laughs> Do you know who I mean? No. She was in the Goonies. She's that old lady. She's like, you goddamn Goonie. <laughs> Carmen? <laughs> she sounds like Carmen. I think that's probably where they took the inspiration for the voice of Carmen. Uh, anyway, the, she throws a basketball at her and her head just fucking explodes like it's got dynamite in it as delightful. I went with Torque. Just because I had a blast with Torque. Torque, yeah. Dude, Torque was a whole lot of fun. Ugh. And just so we can pick a clear winner here, I think I'm going to side with you for Torque. Oh, okay. Because I, it is like one of our highest rated bad movies. Like, yeah. It was an absolute <laughs> blast to watch. I want to watch it again. I have thought about, per <laughs> I have actually thought about purchasing like five or six of these because yeah. I'm like, this one's actually pretty good. And moving on. Uh, so yeah, we're going to give that one to Torque. Uh, favorite protagonist. We actually had some really good picks here that I liked a lot. We've got Dale from Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Lou Ellen Moss from No Country for Old Old Men. <laughs> you shut that mouth, I'll shut it for you. Uh, Ryan Gosling in The Nice Guys. Which is, <laughs> it just cracks me up thinking about him in that movie. With <laughs> and uh, Andy Samberg from Palm Springs. I thought all those were great those picks. Those are good picks. I think, ah, fuck. I think I picked Samberg from Palm Springs. I think that was my nomination. Mine was actually Ryan Gosling from The Nice Guys. That's a really good pick. Because he's just such a fucking... He's a delight. Idiot. Yeah. But he's... And he's doing a cartoon... Kinda, like, he's cartoony in it. And yeah. he's, he doesn't do that in anything else where he's just like... Ah! <laughs> you know what I mean? He's a fuck up, but he's a lovable fuck up. Oh my god, yeah. And I don't know of a movie that he's in... That, like you said, it's just it's such a even, unique... Even remotely similar to it's that. It's such a unique character for him. It really is. Uh, and that's why I chose it. As much as I love, as you know, uh, No Country for Old Men and... I was surprised when you sent me your nominations. Like, at some of them, I was like, oh, okay, Birdman, all yeah. right. Yeah, well, I really thought about it. That's why I was like, I actually need to think about this. Mm. Like, I know that's silly. No, 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 it's not silly at all. I was trying to rush you through it, and we you were, were super drunk. We were. You're going, or wait, did you say here you're going? Uh, well, fuck, I'm kind of hung up on this one. The, the people voted for Dale from Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I actually had to do this. Some of the ones that have four nominations yeah. actually had to go twice. So it was like oh, right. Dale versus whoever, and then whoever versus whoever, and then those winners went against each other. So Dale actually won out twice. Uh, okay. He is a very lovable protagonist. He is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, oh, fuck. Uh, Did you say bullfuck? Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to... Mm, Damn it. I kind of want to stick to my guns with Sandberg and Palm Sandberg. Springs, though, because I love that. He, he's he's really good. He's really he's, good. All the, if you notice anything similar about these guys, only one of them's a badass. The rest of them are just like drunks and fuck ups. <laughs> <laughs> Dale, Gosling, and Sandberg, they're just <laughs> kind of pieces of shit. Well, not Dale's not. What are you going to What are you gonna pick? I already told you. I went, See, with, I went with Gosling. You're sticking with the Gos? Yeah. Whoa. It's just, like I said, it's he's such a fun character. Yeah, he really uh, is. Um, it's just, it's a delight. I think I'm, I think I'm with you on that. Um, I, my, my real hang up is because there are two protagonists in that. That doesn't mean he's not a protagonist though, because it's him and, and fucking, uh, Oh, Russell uh, Crowe. Row Crow. Crustle Row. Crustle Row. Crustle Row. <laughs> you know the difference between a, uh, a dirty bus stop and a lobster with breast implants? I feel like you're going to tell me. I am. And so one's a crusty bus station. The other one's a busty crust station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I'm. I think I'm with you. I'm going to go with Gosling because it is such a out of out of type role for him. Yeah. Which is more impressive. Like, all right, I've seen uh, who who plays Lou Ellen. I uh, can't think of his name. Oh, Lou uh, Ellen Moss. Uh, Thanos. Josh. Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin. I've seen Josh Brolin play a badass before. That's yeah, not, for sure. That's nothing new. Uh, Tyler Labine from Tucker and Dale. This was kind of his breakout role, and then he was typecast as this guy in all kinds yeah. of shit. Uh, Sandberg, 
God, Sandberg's just a fucking comedy genius. I mean, like... You can still go with Sandberg. I won't be mad at you. I, no, I don't, I don't <laughs> give a shit if you're mad or not. Because we have to pick a winner. Uh, yeah, you know, I think I am going to go with Gosling and the Nice Guys. Uh, Sandberg's great in Palm Springs, but it's not against type for him. It's very on brand. It is. It, it's a little softer. It's a anything. little, yeah. It's a little yeah. softer, which is I think, which I think is a good thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So how about bad movies? We've got Sam Hell. Love Sam Hell. He's got to fuck the human population back up to punching numbers. <laughs> uh, Johnny Mnemonic. Charles Napier from One Eyed Monster. <laughs> it's just we just wrote down the actor's name. <laughs> and uh, Spaghetti Man. Uh, so I went with Charles Napier. You did. Yeah. Yes. Was that your? Uh, you gonna stick on that one? Sam Hell, Johnny Mnemonic, Charles Napier, and Spaghetti Man. Favorite protagonist for the bad movie. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna change it to Sam Hell. That was the listener pick. Eighty three percent win on yeah. the eighty three percent listener thumbs. Yeah. For what, Sam Sam what, Hell on that one. What do you? What would you go with? Like if uh, I am absolutely going for Spaghetti Man. He is such a piece of shit. <laughs> Uh, is so charming though, and very very funny. Mm-hmm. And I've also never seen him in anything else, so I would like to give him an award for the one movie that he'll probably be in for the rest of his life. Uh, he's definitely not a leading man material, so yeah, I, I don't know. They're gonna get him as like grungy bank teller number three in a bank <laughs> right. heist movie or something. <laughs> uh, but I really really enjoyed him in it, and he is he is one of my favorite protagonists because the whole time I'm like, God, you're a piece of shit. Like I I hate him. But I like hating him, and you kind of are rooting for him to be a better guy, but he never is. He's exactly the same. He's just kind of <laughs> shitty all the all the time. So you're going Scooter Man? I'm going Scooter 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 Man. <laughs> but I guess uh, between you and the people, Sam Hell gets the uh, Sam Hell gets the low fill. Fuck yeah, he does. Uh, how about favorite antagonist? I'll tell you what, you better bloody give it to to fucking the Dark Knight and the Joker for Heath Ledger's performance alone. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, for favorite antagonist... Mm-hmm. You've got the Joker. No. Uh, as Heath Ledger. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, you've got, you've got the, the Joker as Heath, uh, Heath Ledger as the Joker in uh, The Dark Knight. You've got Javier Bardem as Anton Sugar mm-hmm. in No Country for Birdman. And you've got St. Louis's own John Goodman in 10 Cloverfield Lane. Nice. Which is my Which is my pick. I love Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men. Heath Ledger's performance is stuff of fucking legends... But I do think St. Louis's own John Goodman in 10 Cloverfield Lane is incredibly underrated as a performance. No, it's a great performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think you're wrong. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I very well may be. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Wouldn't uh, be the first time. I, certainly I, won't be the last. I went with Javier. I'm sure you did. Uh, just because it's, I think, the Well, role you know what? The people didn't. The people <laughs> I don't went, give a fuck about the, the people. The people went with the Joker, Birdman. Cause <laughs> of we course live, they did. We live in a society, <laughs> you know? And the Joker's me. Like, I'm crazy, but I relate to the Joker because I'm like, I'm loyal. Like, fuck. But I'll use, if you fuck with me, I'll fucking kill you because I'm crazy. Oh, crazy man. man. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, you're fucking crazy. I just want to watch the world burn. You know, yeah. some men do just want to watch the world burn. I'm trying to think of other, like, douchebag memes I see on Facebook or whatever. <laughs> right. Uh, no, I listen, I love Heath Ledger's performance. One of the best performances of all time. But for me, yeah, I just, I went with Bardem. Well, that's why the word favorite is in there. Right. It doesn't say best, it says favorite. Favorite, right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think we can actually split the award three ways. We'll give half, okay. or we'll give a third to Dead Heath Ledger. <laughs> uh, we'll give another third <laughs> to... <laughs> To uh, Javier Bardem, and uh, we'll give another third to fucking St. Louis's own John Goodman. Okay. And then he'll be like, holy shit, St. Louis's Red Hot Ripplets, yum. Yum. Yeah. And then I'll be like, oh my God, fucking. Fucking toasted ravioli. Toasted revs. They're okay. Emo's pizza. Emo's pizza. Mm. That's, some, that's some good shit right there. Uh, how about favorite antagonist for the bad movies? I'll tell you who won it out by quite a bit, actually. By 73% was the cat monster from Uninvited. Okay. Inside of you, there are two cats, but in this movie, they're literally... They're literally... They're literally... There's like a regular cat, and sometimes it's just a cat, and sometimes it's like the ugliest Muppet you've ever seen, and it opens its weird Muppet mouth that does not look like a normal cat, and then another smaller, angrier cat comes out. Whew. It's pretty gross. Yeah, that's... Okay. It's fun, though. So they're trapped on a boat with this cat. It's a weird fucking movie. What were the... What were the... 
the picks, like the nominations. Uh, yeah. Um, favorite antagonist is the penis from One-Eyed Monster. <laughs> Ron, excuse me. Ron Jeremy's. Yeah, Ron, Ron Jeremy's. Ron Jeremy's alien Ron penis. Ron Jeremy's alien Get penis. Get it right. Yeah, Ron Jeremy's alien penis from One-Eyed Monster. Uh, the cat from Uninvited. And Commander Toadie from Hell Comes to Frogtown. Okay. If you remember him, he was the uh, the gentleman. Oh, re- that, it was a frog. He had a big boner. How could I not? And he was wearing a big Mercedes Benz <laughs> <laughs> emblem on his chest. How could I forget? Woo! Man, the frog. Uh, I'm not going to lie, man. The Frogtown <laughs> apocalypse actually seems pretty lit. Pretty, it sounds like a good time. It sounds like, all right. <laughs> Who'd you go with? Me? Fuck. Uh, I mean, another listener went with a uh, cat. I guess I'm gonna go with Ron Jeremy's alien alien penis. That's, that's what I went with. It's it's <laughs> very threatening. It's very threatening. Uh, and a, it, it's a pivotal plot point. Like at any point during Hell Comes to Frogtown, they could have been like, "Let's not go there, though." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in One Eyed Monster, they're stuck in this cabin, and the dick's trying to kill them. So that yeah. moves the story. They have to get the fuck out of there. Right. Uh, at any point during Hell Comes to Frogtown, they could have been like, "Yeah, let's not though." Let's, just, right. let's go that way let's instead. Just, yeah. Let's go to a less violent place with a where there's no horny frog trying to fuck human women. <laughs> That'd be great. Or a horny woman frog trying to fuck uh, Sam Hell. He just got everybody wants his dick so bad in that movie. It's crazy. And uh, what was the other one? Oh, the cat in Uninvited. I mean, it's kind of a one-eyed monster situation because they're trapped on a boat in the middle of the ocean, but just replace the cat with Ron Jeremy's alien penis. Right. Kind of the same movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's uh, l- l- uh, l- like there's more fucking in One-Eyed Monster, but also there's not. Uh, <laughs> but but that's helping it, in my opinion, because of some of the cheesy comedy that came with it. Mm. Like the tampon thing. When the guy gets like a 10-pack of tampons. He's like wrapping it with <laughs> yes. toilet paper. That's silly as shit. Yeah. So I- I'm going to give it to uh, Ron Jeremy's alien, alien Penis. I'm going to agree with you. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so the people give 73% to the cat from from Uninvited. I think we're going to give it to Ron Jeremy's alien <laughs> penis. <laughs> and the Academy Award goes to, for best monster, oh. this, one, this one was kind of an upset for me, honestly. Okay. Uh, the nominations were the Merman from Cabin in the Woods, the alien from 10 Cloverfield Lane, the other alien from... Um, uh. <laughs> the other alien from Edging Tomorrow. Oh, Edging Tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Almost forgot we watched that. Edging Off Tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. That's what I do with my Sundays when I'm done editing. <laughs> what or what what did the audience go with? Uh the audience, Edge of Tomorrow. Barely though. Really? Yeah. I couldn't believe that the merman got like stomped. Mm. I thought the merman's a delightful design. And the other two are just kind of like spindly little monsters. Well, the merman's one of barely huge. in the film. Yeah, but he's still a great monster. Yeah, I what, went, uh, what, I, what say you? I went with Ten Cloverfield Lane. They, I think they're, they're fucking sleek. Cool. Yeah, they they're, they're just different. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they are. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the merman. Oh. So we got another three way split, <laughs> baby. Baby, giving a third, uh, a third to the merman, third to the alien from Ten Cloverfield Lane, and a third from the other like time alien from Edge of Tomorrow. I said they're different. I guess they're really not, but I just like the design of the alien. I, I, I yeah. guess. I don't know. Yeah, they don't look like uh, like like brainy beings. They look like little attack dog type creatures. Yeah, yeah, they're they're they do look scary though. I'll give them that. Yeah, right, it's a good good design. Uh, I ain't hating on it. How about, I on it. oh, let's we'll see here, uh, favorite monster for bad movies, we've got Ron Jeremy's alien penis, <laughs> the T-Rex from Tammy and the T-Rex, and Spaghetti Man, which is a weird nomination because he's not a monster. Uh, <laughs> but I had to do a lot of shit for this, so you know what, a couple of things just got skipped. Uh, what say you? What say me? Yeah, for best monster. I went with Ron Jeremy's alien penis. I went with Ron Jeremy's alien penis. Uh, I will tell you this. It's a whole lot fucking scarier than Michael from Tammy and the T-Rex. The T-Rex's name is Michael. Oh, okay. Can you hand me a beer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, babe. The uh, blank can to your far left there. It's a, ooh, not a squishy low fill. No, it's a regular yeah. fill. Just, with, a, just with no label. Did you hear Limp Biscuits got a new album? Why? That's what I said. <laughs> Evidently, some of it's slapping, though, because I keep seeing people posting about it. So 
Weird. Yeah, it is weird. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so where are we at? We're on best monster for the bad uh, movie. Yeah, best monster. Already... You know what, man? I'm gonna. I'm just. I, I really did like the uh, T Rex and Tammy and the T Rex, but I think I'm absolutely also gonna give this to Ron Jeremy's alien penis. I don't know how many awards we're going to give this dick before it's all said and done, (laughs) Uh, but it also won Best Monster, uh, 57%. So Nice. Yeah. Moving right along. Moving along. Favorite director. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know what? I wish I would have nominated uh, Thomas Vinterberg. If he had a a more breadth of work, I probably would have nominated him, but I suppose it doesn't matter because it's just the movies we watched for the show. Yeah. But he didn't get a nomination. Who we got to work with is... Denis Villeneuve, <laughs> Martin Scorsese, the Cohen Bros. The Cohen. I think it was. I think it's pronounced Denis Vildoon, right? Denis Vildoon. Uh, I think that's right. Yeah, you get it. It's Dennis Vildoon. <laughs> yeah. So we nominated Dennis Vildoon. Uh, it's better. We keep saying it. Uh, oh, Martin Scorsese, <laughs> uh, Cohen Bros. And Matt Ross, who was my nomination, just because I was like, oh, those are the obvious nominations. You know what I mean? So I was like, What's... well, pick Matt Ross. He did uh, He did Captain Fantastic. Oh, which, okay. fun fact, although it did not make the cut for the Low Fill Awards, is actually the best rated movie we watched all year long, coming in with a hot 100% thumb. Yeah, which is crazy. It makes me wish I, w- I like, or it makes me wonder if I need to revisit some of my ratings i i mean not that it not that i would change that yeah it would I go, like i go back because I, I listen to all of our episodes multiple times uh to like check for edit points and like i'm just checking my work essentially yeah. uh but some of them i'll be like man we only rated that that and then i'll like i'll listen to the episode and i'm like no yeah that uh that's that's about right i couldn't find there was nothing i didn't like about captain fantastic it just was perfect for me yeah uh is it my favorite movie would i watch it again tonight no, it's no. it's heavy. Yeah, it's, it's it is heavy. It's yeah. real fucking heavy. Yeah, you know what's not that's... heavy? Bloody hell, I'm all over it. I've yeah. watched it ten times now. It's like my favorite movie. You know what else isn't heavy? What isn't heavy? Thanks Killing. Oh fuck. Thanks Killing Three can go fuck itself. It though. can go fuck itself. That <laughs> sick piece of shit. What kind of goddamn cash grab money, motherfucker? Oh man. All right, let's do this. Favorite director? Uh, the people chose Marty. People chose Marty Marty's, for The Mar- Departed. Marty scores. For yep. The Departed. For The Departed. Okay. What'd you go with? You know, even though I nominated Matt Ross for Captain Fantastic, I think, uh, looking at the breadth of work here, I think for favorite director for me, I would go Coen Brothers. That's what I went with. Yeah. Um, um, I'm really digging Dennis Veldoon's work, <laughs> but... Um, oh, I'm he's just, fantastic. Like, he's great, but the Coen Brothers, like, I don't... I don't. Even, I can't think of a miss from the Coen Brothers. There might be one. I yeah. I don't know. I can't think of one off the top of my there head. There are there are a few Coen Brothers films that I haven't seen. Oh, I some, thought you were going to say they're just different Coen Brothers, like Steve, some of the Stephen Tom. Some of their earlier movies. They spell it different. It's K K O H I N. Some of their earlier films I haven't watched. I need to, but yeah, I I went with Coen Bros. Co, okay. Co Cohen. Co Bros. Hen Bros. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna stick with that though. I mean, like fucking Fargo, The Big Lebowski, the list goes on. Yeah. Of fucking amazing things that they've done. Um, several of which we actually have covered on the show. Right. So they've just they're just pumping their odds. Yeah. By releasing exactly. great movies every time. Uh, but here's where it gets interesting: the bad movie. So, like, which of these four directors do you care about not the least? Is pretty much what it comes down to. Uh, Stuart Rafel, Graydon Clark, Joseph Kahn, Danny Cannon. Uh, Stuart Rafel's done all kinds of shit. Graydon Clark did Uninvited. Joseph Kahn did Torque. Uh, Danny Cannon did Judge Dredd. I can tell you that the people picked Joseph Kahn. He won by a squeaker of 61%. And that's what I went with. You'd go with Joseph Kahn? Uh, I really did have some fun with uh, some Stuart Rafel films. But uh, I think I'm I think I'm going to go with you because... Torque, Torque walked so fast and the Furious could run. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> Torque, uh, I I appreciated much more after I found out that he kind he kind of did this on purpose. Like 
made it so the, fucking cheesy and just machismo out the ass. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it made me appreciate it that much. I, I think that's what I've, at least that's what I've read. I could I, be totally wrong here. I'm 110% on board with but you there. I, it just, it, I love it. I love it. It's just, yeah. it's, what a boss move. <laughs> it is a boss move. <laughs> Next up, uh, what do we got here? I believe we have scariest Ooh, slash most, most intense in or most tense scene. Yeah, scene. yeah, yeah. Nominations, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nominations include the border shootout on Sicario. Mm. Ooh, 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 that shit is heavy. Mm. Uh, the gas station coin flip on No Country for Birdmen. Oh, the broken arm interrogation. When he's like, are you a fucking cop? Oh, are you yeah. wearing a wire? Are you some kind of cop? Co <laughs> and he's fucking beating his broken arm with that boot. All pretty intense. Are those, those are the three? Those are the three. The, okay. um, the people chose the arm break interrogation scene from The Defarted. Okay. Not what a bad choice because Jack Nicholson's a fucking lunatic in that. He is a fucking lunatic. Um, I went with the Sicario Mexican border scene. Yeah. Um, I feel like you could go really I'm, with any of those. I'm like, going no country bird man. Coin that's flip, the thing. Coin like, flip gas station. Yeah, it's it's so hard for me to choose between those two. Mm -hmm. I think the only reason that I'm gonna go with that is nobody gets injured. That's the thing. Is like, like it's you can just feel that tension ratcheting up. Yeah, and then nobody gets hurt. Nothing happens. He just leaves. They go their separate ways. Whereas the border shootout, you can tell shit's going to go down. Shit goes down. The uh, the interrogation scene, you can tell it's like getting pretty fucking tense in the air. And then they beat the shit out of Leo and break, yeah. really break his arm. I think I'm going to change my pick. I I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Because there's something uh, be, someone's, someone's life is on the line here. There's something to be said about building tension without the payoff. And yeah. still doing it so well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz it's, it's like oh oh yo fucking like edging tomorrow, you know what I mean? You just you just edging. You getting there, you getting there, you getting there, but you, you you get to the end of the scene, nobody gets their head blown off and you still nut. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Have you I think we've watched uh Kevin James's reenactment of oh the the gas station attendant it's from right. It's quite No good. Country for Old Men. It is quite good. If you haven't if you don't know what we're talking about just give it a quick YouTube. Give it a goog. Give it a goog. Give it a bit of a goog. Uh, you'll find it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Kevin James, No Country for Old Men. Yeah. You'll love it. Uh, really, which is weird because I like. I think everybody hates on Kevin James just because he did like Paul Blart. Dude. He did, did a bunch whatever. of shit stuff. You know, like, he's like, he's dancing with a gorilla and they're doing like a Beyonce song or whatever. He's done a bunch of stupid shit. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean he's a bad actor. No. That just means that's what he got cast for. So. Well, not only that and, you know, he's fucking getting paid. He's getting paid so, out of fucking ass. Uh, right. That's yeah. that's his job. <laughs> like that, mm -hmm. that is his his job. Yeah, that's what he does for a living. He's like, you know, if somebody wanted to pay me a fucking uh, $1.2 million to get on the screen and be like, I'm a fat dummy, <laughs> I would absolutely do that. <laughs> like, in a heartbeat. Right. I would do it. I would poop on the floor and then slip and fall into it there face first go. and be like, oh, oh no. no. I'm a silly baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a silly baby. All right, uh, see here. What do people go with? Uh, oh yeah, arm break. Um, All right. Okay, so for the bad, ba movie. for the yeah. bad movies, we've got uh, inside you. There are two cats. The reveal that inside of the one cat, there is yet another cat. <laughs> uh, that there's a there, actually there's another scene in Uninvited where it's like the end of the movie, and they're like panned out, and you can see the boat, and it's in a storm, and it's very obviously a toy boat and a water table that they're just <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> rotating back and forth. Uh, so that's the other pick. Uh, Ron Jeremy's alien penis. Anything with that <laughs> got nominated. Uh, this fucking, his dick got nominated for everything. And then I nominated the bridge scene from Tokyo zombie, which is they're driving away. They figured out there's zombies. And the one guy's like, Oh no, I'm bit. And he's like, I'm jumping off the bridge. You can't stop me. And he's like, no, wait. And they're like, it's actually pretty tense and they're like pretty heartfelt. Yeah. And he jumps off the bridge and they do a slide whistle. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, That's silly. Yeah. Oh, I, lo I love it so much. Uh, but but they do a good job of like kind of ratcheting it up. And then, you know, just the payoff with the slide whistle is just fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, so the people chose uh, the inside you. There are two cats reveal. At uh, sixty three percent to win that, what uh, what okay. say what say you? Uh, I went with 
I went with, uh, here's what I have. Probably something that involved Ron Jeremy's alien penis. That's what I wrote down. I, that sounds good. Uh, <laughs> that sounds that sounds good to me. Um, I am. I'll say we'll split the award this time because I really do want to give something to Tokyo Zombie. Yeah, uh, that's fine. It's a difficult movie to find. It's actually out of print now. So mm. if you find it, it's like a used copy off eBay. You can't right. you can't purchase it anymore, which is really unfortunate because, in my opinion, Tokyo Zombie comedy gold. Like it, the effects that are done poorly are done in such a humorous way <laughs> that you don't mind that they're poor. Yeah, because it's the hilarity that that is in it. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and split that one up. Um, split it, baby. Here's a quick one we can run right through. Best motorcycle shit. <laughs> uh, there were only two nominations for the good movies: uh, when Hemsworth eats shit in Cabin in the Woods, mm-hmm. and the Tumblr bike from The Dark Knight. Right. I would have thought. You know, that uh, Hemsworth eating shit would have got destroyed by the Tumblr bike because everybody has a hard on for the Dark Knight. Yeah. I'm not saying that I hate the Dark Knight. I don't. I just, I get it. It came out a long time ago. We can talk about other, there are other movies that are equally as good. There's there's cool motorcycle shit and other shit shit and stuff. If not better. (laughs) Uh, But uh, Hemsworth eating shit actually. (laughs) That one. (laughs) Came really fucking close. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. The Tumblr bike won out 51% of the Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So very, very, very close on that one. I was absolutely shocked. What like, did you wow. go with? Uh, m- me, personally? Yeah. I went with Hemsworth eating shit. Yeah, that's what like, I went Like, the with. Dark Knight Tumblr bike's cool or whatever. Yeah, it's fucking but cool. I watched Chris Hemsworth eat a fucking invisible wall. That was pretty great. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I liked it. Um, <laughs> now, granted, the effect itself... Not really up to snuff. Uh, it, like if you pause it and look at it, it looks awful. But in my opinion, during like while it's happening, well, it's fine. Uh, but it is hilarious that if you looked away from the screen for half a second and didn't realize that 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 invisible wall or whatever was yeah, there at yeah. the beginning of the movie, right? Uh, would you... be it would be a great payoff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So as far as the bad movies go for best motorcycle shit, nobody nominated anything except for anything from Torque, <laughs> which is a movie about <laughs> motorcycles. So that wins. <laughs> of course it does. A hundred percent. Of course it does. I want to give an honorable mention to Ghost Rider for being a movie that everyone oh, forgot. Oh shit! I forgot about Ghost and Rider. There's also an incredible, uh, absolutely horrific wreck in the movie The Visitor, but unfortunately, it didn't. Uh, I want to give it an honorable mention, but it didn't make the the initial rating cut to be considered for nominations. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But it, it was outstanding. I mean, it, they spent the entire budget <laughs> on that on that fucking wreck, dude. It, it's it's pretty good. All right. Uh, what do we got next? Most insane character. Most insane character. Who do you think won that one? Who do I think won that yeah, one? Who do you think won the most insane character? Will you give me the nominations? Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> Heath Ledger's performance alone as the Joker in The Dark Knight. You'd be crazy out of your mind if you voted for anything else. Uh, Jack Nicholson in The Defarted. Mm-hmm. And J.K. Simmons in Palm Springs. So I went with... Or, well, sorry. I th- Who do I think won? Probably gonna it probably the Joker for Heath Ledger's performance alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah, chose that, that definitely won. Uh, I chose quickly. It was a seventy one seventy one percent margin of victory. Okay. Yeah, I chose Jack Nicholson. That's a really good pick. That probably would have been my pick. Would it have not already been nominated? That's why I picked J.K. Simmons uh, because he is a fucking lunatic in Palm Springs. I don't think he's that crazy. He, uh, just like every couple of months, he decides he's going to drive all the way to Nevada and fucking murder somebody. Yeah, I get it. It just seems like someone that's just really fucking pissed off. Yeah. I'm going to also go with you, though, for Jack Nicholson and The Departed. is absolutely he's just, a stone-cold, egomaniac yeah, man. lunatic. He's just fucking... He's just fu- he's just fucking he's just fucking <laughs> he's just fucking he's fucking hookers and uh, underage and girls and underage girls oh my god man yeah he says some really weird shit in that movie <laughs> yeah he does god I feel like I remember how uncomfortable I was the first five minutes he's just talking to that girl and I'm like ugh, ugh this, should I keep watching this did this age that badly or I was guess it I'll take this, a shower was it this bad during like when I was like wow this is the best movie um yeah so most insane character let's take a look at the bad movies here we've got. The robots from Chopping Mall, Spaghetti Man, 
around Jeremy's alien penis <laughs> and the horny frog lady from Hell Comes to Frog Town. <clears throat> Uh, I don't really know if she was insane. She was like, Just, it's in, it's insane that they wrote her in as a character that had to be in the movie. That's how I feel about like the the Beans Indian from Skeleton Man. <laughs> like who greenlit that? It was like, whoa, 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 hold on, no, this is good. I gotta, gotta get that. Gotta, gotta write that down. Gotta get the Beans guy. And then he says, Beans are good. You just eat them. You just eat them, and they're good to go. Or you just heat them, and they're good to go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fucking Bean guy. Uh, yeah, what, uh, what, what, what say you for most insane character, robots from Chopping Mall, Spaghetti Man, Ron Jeremy's alien penis, or Horny Frog Lady? Again, I feel like, I feel like I'm beating a dead alien penis by saying this. But you're going to beat but I'm gonna dead go dead alien penis. With, <laughs> I'm going to go with John, John Ramey's. John Ramey's paleo, dead. paleo anus. Paleo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what oh, the shit. people go with? Uh, well, let's see here. What did the people go with? Uh, horny Frog Lady. Okay. By a margin of 51%. So just squeaking by that penis. Okay. Just that would have been, been a couple. You know what I mean? About Hell Comes to Frogtown 4, where she sees Aunt Ron Jeremy's alien penis. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a thing. I, it could be. Yeah. That, that could work. We can, we can make that work. Yeah. You're just like, I wish it ever, ever did like an inchworm thing. That would have been, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That would have been great. Um, yeah. You know what? What are you going with? I think I'm going to go with the people and give it to Horny Frog Lady. Okay. Because, and not because she's insane, like her character is insane. It's just insane that that character made it into a script to me. Yeah. I can see uh, that. But also that movie's about a detached dick. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I'm, gonna, I'm changing it up last second. I'm going to go with Ron Jeremy's Alien. You have famous. to. You have yeah, to. Yeah, I do because it's fucking crazy it's that they wrote silly. it in there. It, it, I will say, though, briefly, the robots from Chopping Mall, whoever designed them, I thought they were cool looking robots. Yeah. But the fact that you could just like walk up the stairs and they'd be like, Mrrr. fuck, <laughs> <laughs> they, can't, right. like, they can't do anything. Uh, let's see here. What is next? Best slash worth effect. CGI. I think I changed it on Instagram to just say oh, okay. uh, best visual effects. Best visual effects. Best visual effects. Uh, let's see here. The people went with. What are, What are the nominations? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good point. Uh, Hemsworth eating shit. <laughs> Cabin in the woods. Uh, Walter Mitty. Love and monsters. Sorry to bother you. Okay. I'm going to say unequivocally, I'm on the side of the people because the movie looks fucking incredible. Love and monsters. That's what I went with. You're going with it. Yeah. I, it just looks. The monster design, the effects, the way it looks, the, the texturing like... or whatever. I don't know what the terms are for it. If you haven't seen Love and Monsters, check it out. Oh, it's so good. The first 10 minutes of it, you feel like it's like a young adult film. Yeah. And then it does. It drops it... that tone pretty quick. Yeah. And then it's just a fun romp with monsters. Right. And they look amazing. They look so good. And yeah. They, yeah they, like, I hate when you get a monster movie. Like when I was a kid and I went to go watch Godzilla movie or whatever. It's like you watch the whole movie and it's two hours and ten minutes long or whatever. And you get like six minutes of Godzilla on screen. Yeah. That, that shit, shit pissed oh, me yeah. off, man. Show me that. Show me them fucking monsters, baby. <laughs> show me them monster titties. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know how people felt when they rushed Area 51 to see them aliens. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's uh, the clear winner there. Yeah, so that's uh that's uh that is unanimous. Us and the people that Love and Monsters won by a margin of seventy eight percent. Let's see your best worst CGI or visual effect for bad movie. Tammy riding the T Rex, which does look hilarious. <laughs> uh, the cat and uninvited again. Anything from the movie branded. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Uh, Tokyo Zombie and Judge Dredd. I'm not sure why I have an extra nomination on this Jeez, one. Jeez, Danny. Whatever, man. I guess I get rid of Tokyo Zombie. I think Tokyo Zombie was mine. I'm just going to throw that out. So we've got four. Uh, Tammy and the T-Rex, Uninvited Cat, Branded, Judge Dredd. I quite liked a lot of the stuff in Judge Dredd. Are we going... I thought we were going like the worst. Like mm. worst. I guess we'll in... go worst because they're bad movies. But yeah, that, that one kind of threw me off because I was like... It doesn't really. Right, right. We're not real awards. Nobody's gonna like. <laughs> no, I know. Nobody's gonna write <laughs> the, really the, the film actors, <laughs> the film actors, screen actors guild, and go, screen, hey, yeah, I'm gonna have to fucking these find these fucking assholes. Guys. 
what uh what the audience go with uh see here the audience went with uh oh this was the only one that was actually a fucking dead tie uh okay. between judge dread and tammy and the t-rex those were the the finalists okay judge dread huh see i went with branded uh because it was fucking stupid oh dude it, it, looked so, awful. it was so dumb <laughs> yeah uh, it looks so bad no i'm with you because we sat through the whole fucking movie and then finally finally you see the monsters at the very end and they just look like worms yeah <laughs> like they're very visually unimpressive and you're just like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> like seriously it was kind of a long movie or it felt long as fuck i do it was, remember that it was uh, at least an hour and a half i think good lord <laughs> fucking sue him, get my money back. That's bullshit. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and skip this. We'll come back to this one. Uh, how about best camera work? Good movies. We're talking No Country. We're talking The Dark Knight. We're talking Sicario. And we're talking Captain Fantastic. Oof. I know. Man. Yeah, that's a hard one. Uh, Sicario won it with the listener choice 59%. Sicario won it. Mm hmm. Pretty, uh, pr pretty close and heated there for a long bit mm -hmm. uh like neck and neck with the dark knight okay yeah that was a i was watching that one with interest because... for me for me it's between sicario and no country for old men i have a hard time picking i think initially i wrote sicario mm -hmm. what did you go with uh fuck i think i think my my pick was captain fantastic and i don't know that camera work is the right word but for palette like it has a great palette color it's just palette very stuff. visually it's, uh it pops yeah you know what i mean it pops it looks good right uh it's got a lot of, like a warm tones cool tones and yeah. they they work together it just i agree looks really agree. sharp and it being the only movie that i gave a 10 out of 10 thumbs to all year long i think i'm just gonna go ahead and go with that these all look great there's yeah. not one yeah. of these movies that like well that movie looks a little shitty doesn't it right no, they, they all look amazing no, they, yeah exactly so we'll uh, we'll give it to all of them. No. <laughs> we'll give it to all of them. You guys got a four way tie. You all get a participation award because you're all special. <laughs> I'll pick a winner just because I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. <sighs> now for people for the bad movies, Taming the T Rex, Johnny Mnemonic, Branded, and Jiu Jitsu. For worst camera work, Branded takes it home fifty four percent. Yes, it does. I would agree As it with should. that. Um, <laughs> you know what? I I would actually. I'm going to change mine. Jujitsu. Really? When I was doing that first person, third person, first person, third person when they were fighting. Yeah. Oh shit! Was making me nauseous. Yeah, that was pretty rough. Oh my god! If 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 Battlefield Earth would have got ranked high enough to be chosen for nominations, that would have won Hook Line and Sinker. Yeah. That's the worst camera work I've ever seen in a film. I think. Really? I don't it's know about that. Pretty bad. I mean, we watched. Uh, God, it was like three hours fucking long too, or something. <laughs> it wasn't that long. It was fucking felt like all night. What was that? What was that? Uh, that fucking. Long. What was that really shitty movie we watched? <laughs> You'll have to be more specific. <laughs> exactly. Uh, talking about Star no, like, Two? No, like the. It was a uh, English movie. It was real low budget. I think it was a vampire. Was it vampire or zomp? No, it was vampires. We watched a low budget English movie with vampires. Yeah. Something bride. Oh, you're talking Hellbride? about Hellbride? Was that Hellbride? Yeah. So when that has like the guy in the bird mask and he's like, let us pray. <laughs> the guy's doing the weird stand up comedy bit, but it's not funny. <laughs> right. He's just like, I'm a sick fuck. <laughs> oh, uh, man. That yeah, was terrible. That, that's some really, that's that's really some amateur bad camera shit. work. Um, I went with Branded. Did I already say that? Yeah, I mean, it's an obvious, it's an obvious winner. I'm, I'm going to go with jujitsu because there is like a five minute sequence in the first 10 minutes of the movie that is actually like nausea inducing. Yeah. Apart from that, if you cut that five minutes out of that movie, it is hands down branded, no contest. Right. So I'm very comfortable with that as a pick. For sure. Uh, and last but not least, uh, here we get to best overall movie. <laughs> Best overall movie. The nominations are for the good movies: The Prestige, Robot and Frank, No Country, for Birdman, and Bloody Hell. Bloody Hell, Daniel. <laughs> well, No Country for Old Men won it for the listener choice by eighty three percent. I am absolutely throwing it down for Bloody Hell, just because I've, it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's it got, is. It's got rewatch value, and I think there's something to be said about something that you can easily and breezily watch multiple times, in my opinion. Like, when you see, like, a really great fucking interesting piece of artwork, and you sit and you watch it and you sit through it, and you soak in the story and all the characters wash over you and you feel the emotions the characters want you to feel by their portrayals, and then you can never watch it again if you don't want to. That, that happens to me all the time. I'll yeah. watch a movie and be like, I, was, I really enjoyed that. And would I ever watch it again? No. No, probably not. No, I'm good. There are a lot of movies like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I went with No Country for Old Men. As you know, it's one of my favorites. I do know that about you. Um, it For me, it's just a movie that I can continually... I, I, just, I just keep going back to it. Just I keep, can watch it. Just can't stop. All the fucking time. I can't stop, I Daniel. can't stop coming. It feels so good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so, yeah. I, I, I mean, guess we'll just split it two ways on that yeah, one. No, that's fine. I'm, I'm fair with that. Uh, well, I mean, technically, Bloody Hell can go fuck itself because you <laughs> and the listeners. The listeners, uh, 83% margin. Yeah. No Country for Old Men. Yeah. Is that the widest margin for victory? Uh, it is tied for the tied. widest. It's tied for the widest margin for victory uh, nice. with favorite protagonist, Sam Hell. Nice. Sweet. Uh, best overall movie. Let's take a look at those. Bad movie titties. We've got bad movie titties. Hell comes to Frogtown. Tammy and the T Rex. Twerk. Twerk. And Spaguter boy. Spaguter boy. Flick. Speggy band. Speggy man. Speggy Murbus. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what be- you best overall movie out of those? Yeah. Damn. Hell comes to Frogtown. Tammy and the T Rex. Twerk and Spaghetti Man. Which one could you rewatch? I went with Torque. I mean, you should know that. Yeah, I should by know with Torque. Um, well, the the people, the people said Tammy and the T Rex, which I don't necessarily disagree. I just think all those people that voted for Tammy and the T Rex have never seen Spaghetti Man. I didn't, uh, Yeah, I don't know. I I started Spaghetti Man here with you, and and I fell just, asleep. I wasn't into it. No, personal, no. personal. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Got to you a little late in the day, also. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you know, one a.m. <laughs> a little early to start Spaghetti Man. No, I didn't fall asleep immediately. I watched like forty-five minutes of it. You watched forty-five minutes of Spaghetti Man. And you weren't like, into it when just, he's like throwing spaghetti. Yeah, that's funny, but it's just. Oh my god, that's great. Uh, all right, well, you fucking hate Spaghetti Man. I down and hate Spaghetti Man. And uh, best overall movie: Hell Comes to Frogtown, Tammy the T Rex, Torque, Spaghetti Man. So you're going Torque. I'm going Torque, baby. Best overall movie. God damn, I could watch that again, though. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Torque also. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, because I know that I would put Torque in and sit down and watch the whole thing again. <laughs> Spaghetti Man, I have put back on to rewatch three times. Never finished it. Yeah. Not, not once. Yeah. So I would it just... It def- just kind of loses its charm, I think. I after- would... I would at- well, I think... There's a certain point in Spaghetti Man where it's like they're beating the dead horse, and it's yeah, like, that's... oh fuck! And then they just—it's like <laughs> it gets to a point where they're like, they're like, we're still doing it, and it becomes funny again for some reason. Uh, it's because the guy's such a piece of shit. Anyway, that's it, that's baby. It. We're giving that one to Torque. The people went with Tammy and the T Rex. What do the people know? Fucking, they don't know Joe, baby. They don't know, they don't Jack know Joe. Shit. shit. So they we're don't... still we're still gonna do the other segment of the show. Hey, what you watching? What uh, what you been watching, man? <gasps> Ooh, what you been watching? Ooh, what you? Ooh, <laughs> Ooh what was you? What was you watching? <laughs> so I have been watching Baskets. Oh yeah, how is that? I, I mean, I've talked about. I've told you about it so many I know, times, I'm doing man. It for the listeners, I know you've told me about Baskets. <laughs> I fucking love Baskets. You fucking love Baskets. I love it. It's like, so good. Like Wicker. I love Wicker too. Any kind He's of a basket. good guy. Any kind of baskets. <laughs> Got him. Uh, any kind of baskets. I just love them. No, uh, baskets. It's, it's it's a basketball documentary. Exactly. If you haven't seen it. <laughs> yes. Go fuck yourself, about man. The 1992 Chicago. This is why Bulls. I can't talk about anything with you. Please d- tell me. T- tell no, me, it's tell a, the it's, good people about it's, baskets. It's a uh, Zach Galifianakis product. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He plays he plays a uh, a clown that <laughs> was trained in France, which sounds just absurd as it is. 
uh, goes back to America to try to make it as a clown. <laughs> Fucking good luck. Uh, it's just funny, man. And it, he's got a brother, and it, it's also Zach Galifianakis. They're twins, and their names are Chip and Dale Baskets. <laughs> That's pretty great. And isn't uh, Louis... Um, yes. Uh, what's his he name? plays Anderson? their mom. Louis Anderson's... He <laughs> plays <laughs> their mom. Okay. Yeah, you got you got me. Watch little... it, dude. I'm yeah. serious. I, I saw the cast before, and I was like, this looks pretty great. And then not, I never watched it. Not only is it goofy as fuck, mm-hmm. it's kind of heartfelt as well. I like that. It, it, it gets you a little bit. Mm. You kind of start to care about these characters a little bit. Mm. You're like, man, I kind of fucking feel sorry for that guy. I don't know. It's great. Okay. Other than that, I've been reading Butcher's Crossing, which I've mentioned previously on the show. Yeah, it's going to be a feature film with Nick Cage. Oh, shit. It's a really fucking good book. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not familiar with John Williams, he wrote Butcher's Crossing, Stoner, not that kind of stoner, Ooh. and a book called Augustus, which I haven't started yet. About Augustus Bush? Yep, that's it. You got it. Really? No. Oh, it's like, damn. <laughs> nailed it. Uh, fantastic author. Augustus Bush, actually, is a pretty interesting character. Right. Kind of a cocksucker, but interesting guy. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't mean he's not interesting. Well, I have been reading yeah? nothing because oh, I can't read. fuck you. But what I did do was I watched uh, Army of Thieves, which is the prequel to the Army of the Dead, uh, like Zack Snyder film, I think. Okay. Um... I didn't like Army of the Dead. Uh, Army of Thieves, I actually enjoyed quite a bit. Cool. Um, it's just, it's it's the, it's got an interesting protagonist who's a really likable guy. Uh, as far as shows, did I check out anything new recently? Did you? Oh, I watched Titan. I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, you did mention that. Uh, that is from, gosh, I want to give her a, give her a, a name drop here. Titan. Shishan. Titan, uh, directed by Julia, I'm not even going to attempt her last name, Julia, Julia D. Julia D. Julia D, but she also did the um, uh, the Neon Demon, which I haven't seen, but I've, I've heard mixed reviews about. Uh, she did Maniac from 2012. Wait, did she? No, she did not. I'll shut my fucking mouth. Shut your mouth, dude. Uh, shutting my, this is me shutting my mouth. She did Raw from 2016, which is another foreign, like a French film. Oh, okay. Uh, which I actually did enjoy quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, so it was like, oh, she's that's on my this, watch list. She's got this new movie out. Oh, woo! I'll check it. It's a little unsettling, but it's it's really fun, and the character development is there. Okay. So it it worked for me. I liked it. Nice. Uh, but T Ten, man, it just it's such a fucking weird, bonkers story. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it's so bonkers that it makes me wonder why anybody was like, mm, we should make that a movie. Like I'm not sure. It just it seems like a like a like a fever dream from a uh, like a teenager. Huh. It doesn't seem like a real cognitive story. It it takes wild turns left and right that don't seem to make any sense. Right. Like it's this, but it's also this, but it's also this, but it's also this. <laughs> it's got, just keeps piling it on. Yeah, yeah. It's like if somebody uh, came up to you, like you met a new person at a party, and they're like, "Hey, wh- what do you do?" And he'd be like, "Oh, I'm a skydiving instructor." And I'm also a stuntman, and I'm also a lion tamer, and, you know, also I punch cars to death. You know what I mean? Just like, still, like, okay, I get All it, guy. Right, fucking buddy. calm down. All right. Yeah, you're, you're fine. I'm going to take about 25, 50% off of there. <laughs> Did you ever uh, watch Maniac? Yeah, with Elijah Wood. It's fucking no. outstanding. Oh. No. Uh, with Emma Stone and Jonah Hill. It's on Netflix. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Any, I'm an eagle. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, hey, where are you? I'm the eagle. <laughs> in a movie the show's great oh uh, no I, I really enjoyed me yeah like, i thought uh, that was like one of the first times you really got to see a lot of depth of character for for jonah hill yeah uh for sure yeah and emma stone's a fucking home run right every, she's never found it in a day in her life right she's you great see, seen uh, uh gruella no it's great like i fucking hate 101 dalmatians i could not give two shits about cruella Deville. we went and took my kid to watch it and i was like it's a pretty good movie nice yeah yeah not too bad uh, as far as any sort of shows, I... did you ever finish or continue watching Lodge Forty Nine? I did not. Can I, it is on my list. Oh, I remember what I wanted to to talk about. Uh, Doug recommended this is actually what took me off of Lodge Forty Nine. Uh, Doug Wicker had recommended I check out the show version of What We Do in the Shadows, mm-hmm. which is a movie we should cover on the Ween next year. I fucking love that movie. 
Yeah. Uh, and I am like 10 episodes, 10, 12 episodes into what we do in the shadows of the show. Mm -hmm. It is, it is very funny. I very much enjoy it. I do think the film is better as a standalone thing than the show is, but that right. doesn't mean the show's bad. I just think the movie's slightly better. Hmm. And that and that's it. But yeah, I'm really enjoying the show. Also, nice. the casting's a little bit different, which originally threw me when I watched like the first two episodes of it. I was like, it's not even the same guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that that that's a little that, that yeah. was a ding right out of the gate for me. But now that I'm watching the show, I'm like, well, this guy's also great, though. Right. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. Also, very nice. Um, yeah. So that's 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 what I've been doing. How, how many thumbs would you give this episode out of thumbs that are like awards? This episode? Yeah. Can you even call this an episode? I'm just kidding. Uh, it's like, <laughs> I'm just it's kidding. like a little bit of a halvesy. <laughs> this episode gets out of how many thumbs? How out, many? Of, out of 10 award oh, thumbs. Oh, 10 award thumbs? Mm -hmm. Damn, I thought we were just going like two award thumbs. Two award thumbs? But we have to <clears throat> stick with the 10, right? Yeah, we got to stick with the 10 so we can give this episode... An episode thumb rating. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, it was okay. It was short. It was short. I kind of like the fact that we can just sit in here, bing, bang, boom for an hour, and then we can go fuck off and just hang out once a year. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give it an eight. Give some, it a solid eight. I think I'm going to give it an eight five. I'm pretty <laughs> cool with this, considering normally it takes us about five hours to make this show. This yeah. is pretty This is pretty refreshing. It's pretty breezy. It's pretty, yeah, I'm liking it. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going to go put some clothes on. You guys aren't going to start sucking each other's dicks, are you? Let's go to that gold talk. We're a one-eyed Batman. Can I make a suggestion that doesn't involve violence? Or is this the wrong crowd? Maybe we should call in a bomb threat to Houston. I think it's free beer night at the Astrodome. The Jedi, Bob, we don't fight with guns, we fight with the mind. Guys in business is out booming. But that is one big pile of shit. Jail gone. It's Just Two Movies is a production of Blue Cheese and Bacon Studios and can be found wherever you get your podcasts. Let's just, uh, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just get it, we'll just get into it. <laughs>